with us here from AT&T Stadium. A great setting for undefeateds meeting up. SEC action brings us 17th ranked Arkansas and 10th ranked Texas A&M. Both 3-0. Joe Tessitore, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe with you. Kevin Sumlin, he says this team is more mature. They have more accountability. Quarterback Trevor Knight has helped out a lot. Of course, he stands opposite Brett Bielema. He says we have to play our game. Can't have miscues. Last year, nine penalties for Arkansas in this matchup. Razorbacks won the toss. They chose to receive. Braden Mann will be kicking away to Dominic Reed and Keon Hatcher. Both trying to get to 4 0. Set the course for big expectations ahead. And a true freshman with his 17th touchback now on 22 kicks. As Todd, we revisit with Austin Allen, who a few weeks ago we saw what he was all about in that thrilling win at TCU. He was named SEC Player of the Week after that double overtime victory. And what he has shown in, in his early starting career is his ability to play his best when the game is on the line. Fourth quarter against Louisiana Tech in his first start, led his team on a game-winning drive. And then, as you mentioned, what we saw him do in the fourth quarter and overtime at TCU was pretty impressive. Play action to start the game. Pressure right away and met just beyond the line of scrimmage was Drew Morgan. And as you can see how fast and active Justin Evans is. He is a tackling machine. I mean, he is a guy who loves to play in space and is a very sure tackler. Came from junior college and is off to a great start to his career at AM. He's a guy that, that likes to be around the ball. And Arkansas is going to try to take advantage of his aggressiveness later on in this game, getting him to react to a play action. The pitch to Williams here on second and eight. Well blocked as he takes it across the 30-yard line. Alaka made the tackle a gain of four. Really nice block. Keon Hatcher was actually in the backfield as a fullback on that play and was a lead blocker and did an outstanding job. You don't normally see a wide receiver as a lead blocker coming out of the backfield. You have to contain the defensive ends for Texas A&M. That is the key. Miles Garrett, one of the best players in the country, and Deshaun Hall on the other side. You have to have a plan for them on third down. Here's third and four. Allen, as it's incomplete, he was looking for the capable tight end Jeremy Sprinkle. Armani Watts had coverage for the Aggies. Toby Baker takes the field with his 47.8 average. And Christian Kirk, one of the most dynamic players in the game, back to return. And Kirk dropped the ball, comes out there, and it looks as if Arkansas has it. Secured it. And Arkansas recovers Cody Hollister on coverage coming up with it. I was a little surprised, Joe, that he didn't call for a fair catch. And I think at the last minute, he took his eyes off the football and eyed the guys coming down. He looked at who was coming at him first, did not secure the catch. And right away, Arkansas with a big turnover. In the game last year in this stadium, Arkansas had two turnovers, AM had zero. The first turnover tonight belongs to the Aggies. And give credit to Santos Ramirez for forcing that ball out. As they take over at the 16. 
And Williams, not much there, just a gain of one. Sean Washington on the tackle. Arkansas has been outstanding so far this season in the red zone. The last eight trips, they've scored touchdowns. They've scored 12 offensive touchdowns on the season, and all of them have been in the red zone. And we talked about Austin Allen playing his best in critical situations. He is 10 for 15 with seven touchdown passes throwing in the red zone. To the end zone, he goes. Touchdown, Hogs, Keon Hatcher. Well, AM tried to come with a tricky pressure. And they dropped Miles Garrett in the coverage, which <laughs> that really helped Arkansas. They had single coverage on the outside. And once again, Austin Allen accurate throwing in the red zone. Cole Hedlund caps it. Deion Hatcher, his third touchdown catch of the year. This is what set it up. Cody Hollister jumping on the fumble of that opening punt return. And then Austin Allen, his eighth passing touchdown of this season. Austin Allen touchdown pass and a touchdown lead early for Arkansas. And it's Connor Lippert. And Speedy Noyle on the return for the Aggies. As he tries to get the edge. And Speedy is forced out after a good return to set up Texas A&M. 42-yard kickoff return. I tell you what, they also had something set up for maybe later in the game. Christian Kirk bellied back like he was going to be a receiver on this play. But Speedy Noyle decided to keep it. He broke one tackle. You're going to see Kirk come in to the left as a lead blocker. But originally, he was behind the receiver for a throwback on a kickoff return. But great field position for Texas A&M to start their first offensive possession. Trevor Knight, the quarterback. As he goes incomplete, of course, Trevor Knight, he arrived at AM this past January after transferring in from Oklahoma, where he was the team captain. He was 11 and 4 as a starter there, lost his job to Baker Mayfield, also had an injury uh, during that time. Very mature guy and has been a perfect fit for AM. Here's Knight as he gets that out to midfield. It'll be third and two from there, the completion to Christian Kirk. Thing about Trevor Knight, he's a very good runner. I think Arkansas has to be very disciplined when they rush the passer, he's especially in third down in yardage like this, a very capable runner if things break down. Third and two, as Ford searches for an answer, and the answer is to drive ahead and pick up the yardage needed. But good strong run by Keith Ford. Trevor Knight now stepping up in the pocket, taking a shot downfield, and incomplete in and out of the hands of Christian Kirk. Now that's a ball that has to be caught for Texas A&M. Trevor Knight did his job stepping up in the pocket to elude the free rusher. It's a little bit underthrown, but that, that is right in the breadbasket for Christian Kirk. Normally he's going to make that catch, and when you get opportunities to make big plays against a blitz, you have to take advantage. Ford in motion as they give it to Williams. And Williams with one cut and good leg drive. It's a, little, a gain of nine there. A little different look for AM's offense. They're a predominantly a 10 personnel offense, which means one running back, no tight ends, and four wide receivers. That time they had two backs in the backfield, which they had not shown. And they were able to uh, get close to the first down with a nice run. Nine-yard run. 
Third and one. a and can wait for the end of the quarter if they want. And that's what they do. Entertaining stuff here. Six time in eight years that this new age football palace is the back alley meeting spot for the Aggies and the Razorbacks. Seven nothing at the end of one. Arkansas. Emmett and Jerry coming out for this one. Of course, Jerry has a great vested interest in his alma mater, Arkansas. Third down and one on the 42. I would not be surprised to see Kevin someone take a shot here and still go for it on fourth down if they don't make it. There's your third and one. Trevor Knight. Look at Trevor Knight go. Hello, end zone. 42 yard touchdown run by the new kid in town. Beautiful job on the zone read by Trevor Knight. Dietrich Wise, the best defensive lineman, is going to get fooled. That's who you're reading. He's going to come all the way in with the back. They're going to pull the, the slot receiver as a lead blocker, but Dietrich Wise goes with the back. Trevor Knight makes the right decision, and A&M about to tie this game up. Seven seven. Trevor Knight, fourth rushing touchdown already this year. This is just excellent execution of a simple zone read play. A nice job of being patient, selling the fake, fooling Dietrich Wise, and then following the lead block by Ricky Seals Jones, who is listed as a wide receiver, Joe, but yeah, is built like that. a defensive end or a tight end. Check in with the studio with Adnan. Stats kind of upside down for Arkansas right now. Here's Morgan now as they go with a bubble screen, and he gives one quick move and is able to move the chains. It's a good call by Dan Enos. They're having trouble running the football. They've had eight running plays, and four of them have been for negative yardage. So you throw a bubble screen on first down, which in essence is, a, is like a wide running play. You just get the ball in the guy's hands out in space and try to loosen up the defense a little bit that way. Dan Enos has been one of the best hires Brett Bielema has made. The, the balance that he's brought to the offense and his knack and feel for play calling, I think has been outstanding. Williams, as Arkansas tries to get back to their identity a bit, running the ball up the middle, tackled by Moore. Raleigh Williams from right here in Dallas. Last time he was in the state over in Fort Worth when we did the game, he had 137 yards on 28 carries. And his dad is a Dallas police officer. His family and friends, and his brother Brian, who is a very good prep prospect, one of the top defensive backs in the class of 2018. Second and six. Williams again. And here he goes. Tracked down inside the five by Justin Evans and Priest Willis. Dad likes that a heck of a lot. 55 yard run. Well, the linebackers got mixed up on AM's defense. Both of them went to the wrong side of the formation. Watch both of them go this way and left a big gap for Raleigh Williams. Nice block by the center, and Raleigh Williams takes advantage of the voided area by the AM inside linebackers and turns it into a big run. His career long, and it comes at a perfect time as Arkansas is looking to retake the lead. Williams met at the line and sent back. Good leverage by the A&M defense, expecting run, thinking run, thinking inside run, and they kind of sold out on that inside. Wouldn't be surprised to see Arkansas try to get to the perimeter here, either with a run pass option for Austin Allen or something that gets the ball out wider. And also the and Jackson and extra tight ends in the game on second and goal. 
back. Cody Walker turned back. How about this Aggies front? Kingsley, Kiki, Miles Garrett, and Alaka. Yeah, Kiki does a great job of just kind of getting skinny in between the guard and the tackle. Watch 88 right here. He's just going to turn sideways, get skinny into the hole, and then wrap up the ball carrier and wait for some help. Third and goal. That's Morgan in motion. Allen to pass. Pressure nearly intercepted. The Aggies slam the door shut again, and Allen is struggling to get to his feet. Claude George came hunting him down. Boy, Claude George was just coming on a, a quarterback blitz once the quarterback left the pocket, and he just had a beeline to the quarterback. That's an excellent tackle by Claude George causing the throw away. Ball was almost intercepted by Richard Moore because of that pressure from Claude George. You know, Cole Hedlund had a short field goal at a tough hash angle at TCU that he missed. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually wants this backed up yep. here, Todd. But rather than just take a delay penalty, let's see if one guy fires off and draws the penalty for Arkansas instead of trying to get a delay a game. Well, even if he makes this field goal, what a win by the Aggie defense on that goal line stand. Especially considering the pass interference, all the attempts they had down there, Todd. Five plays, negative seven yards, and their quarterback got dinged up as well. Austin Allen, he's in that, the medical tent down on the sidelines for Arkansas. Arkansas quarterback Austin Allen slowly came to the sideline after that hard hit. He's been examined by the medical training staff for being able to not breathe. They were trying to pull his shoulder pads off his chest, let him try to catch his breath. They're also trying to look at his shoulder right now. They've taken him inside the medical tent where I'm able to see, but I have seen them coming out here and get some items to wrap him up. I'll try to keep you posted. Meanwhile, redshirt freshman Ty Story has been warming up at quarterback. He's only played in one game so far this season, guys. Ty Story is a redshirt freshman who was an early enrollee the previous year. It was a four-star coming out, but obviously that could be a potential big loss with Austin Allen. Speedy Noyle on the return here, and he is tripped up right near the 20-yard line. Not much on the inside for Keith Ford that time. Texas A&M, both teams, are, their stats are kind of backwards. A&M with 94 yards rushing and only five yards passing. And coming into the ball game, they were up close to 300 yards a game passing. Arkansas, on the other hand, 123 yards passing, 57 yards rushing. It's kind of a topsy-turvy, upside-down first half. Knight completes this, seals Jones. Here he goes down the sideline. Ricky seals Jones. When Trevor Knight sets his feet and throws on time, he's accurate. And that's exactly what he did on this play. Now AM's going to try to get lined up and go fast. Good accurate throw and the big body. What a stiff arm. Again, this is a wide receiver lowering his shoulder, running like a big tight end. Here's Keith Ford. As he tried to cut back, but was tracked down by Taiwan Johnson. You talk about a big body. You see Seals Jones going down there. Flag comes out here at the end. He's 6'5, 240 running that. Blocking the back. Offense number 76. That penalty is declined. Second down. That's a smart thing to do. Yeah, I mean, they already got a negative yardage play just with the pursuit of their defense. So a 47 yard reception by Ricky Seals Jones. And under six minutes to play here in the second quarter. And Texas AM looking for a little something after they got out of the hole with the targeting and a late hit. Second and 15 for Trevor Knight. 
setting up the screen. Williams was tracked down right away. That was Dre Greenlaw. Uh, very well read, well disciplined defensive play. Back to back first and second down plays. Right now, if you're Trevor Knight, take care of the football and try to find a matchup that you like. Here's Williams. As he gets it back just inside the 30 yard line, tracked down by Johnson. Very conservative play call by Noel Mazzoni that time, playing for a field goal, trying to even this ball game. Camera back out there. He came in having made nine straight. The one he missed, he left out to the right. See if he doesn't overcompensate on this one. 48 yarder left hash. And he puts it through. And as it has been so many times in the past between these two, we are tied. That you talked about was Kevin Sumlin saying that, you know, sometimes it takes a while for a quarterback to be comfortable shaking off plays and saying, I'm not comfortable with that play. Well, Kevin Sumlin was coaching Drew Brees when he was at Purdue, and it was until his junior year he dared to do that. That's why the graduate transfer is so good. Trevor Knight will tell him exactly the plays he likes. Sonny was a linebacker at Purdue and then went on to start his coaching career there in the late 90s. And Stewart will take a knee. Cody Walker as he finds a good seam and a strong run from the 240 pound senior. Nice job. They, they what they did with Miles Garrett over here is they're going to take the tight end and they're going to get a little chip on him first. You're going to see him on the edge of the screen. The wide receiver gets a little bump and then Dan Skipper blocks him and they run right inside of him. That's what's called a nudge where the wide receiver just nudges him on his way down the field and then the tackle takes care of him for the rest of the play. That's Keon Hatcher lined up at fullback again. Here's the pitch to Devois Whaley. As he is still on his feet at the 45-yard line. Holly? Well, this Arkansas offensive line has been one that they've been leaning on the last few years, but not as experienced this season. They've been making changes up front, including again tonight with two new positions. Last week, Frank Ragno, their center, moved out to left or to right guard, where he was named the SEC Player of the Week. But they have put him back at center tonight. Jake Rollerson is back out at right guard, and Brian Wallace, of course, getting his first career start. Guys, just not as as we're used to seeing this offensive line for Arkansas. No, not quite what we're used to seeing in the backfield either as Raleigh Williams hasn't been in since that fumble down near the goal line. Cody Walker dotting the I formation. Here's a screen now, Morgan, and Morgan almost lost the ball and then secures it as he gets it to the 41. And just to go back to that offensive line point that Holly made, part of the deal is Frank Ragnow is an excellent football player number 72 and his versatility has allowed them early in the season to take a look at some different combinations. He was a starting right guard for 13 games last year, moved to center this year, played right guard last week, but they need him at center because he's an excellent player and they need a guy in there communicating to the rest of the line at the center. Allen on third and eight. Complete. Cornelius, tiptoe, cut back, stiff arm, first and goal, Razorbacks. Oh. Well, they had a plan for both defensive ends. They had a tight end on the side of Miles Garrett, and then watch the back, help on Deshaun Hall. Helps the new starting right tackle with Deshaun Hall, a clean pocket, and Austin Allen delivers a strike to the sideline. But they had to have the protection first, and Austin Allen delivered to Cornelius. Thirty-eight yard effort out of Cornelius and look who's back. The local boy number twenty two. Williams. Redemption Raleigh Williams.
Second chances are great, aren't they, Dad? I'm not so sure that wasn't the same play that they ran when he fumbled. But he was going to protect it that time, no matter what. Power football. Lead with the fullback. Pull the backside guard. Throw hold. And look at Raleigh Williams covering up that football when he got close to the goal line. He's your main guy. He's your bell cow tailback right now. Let's go down with the field to Holly. Well, guys, Raleigh Williams coming back, as we've told you before, from a devastating neck injury last season. He almost thought he was paralyzed. In fact, Brett Bielema said that doctors told him he was about an inch away from paralyzation or certain death. For him to have the courage to come back and run so fearlessly, Raleigh Williams showing a great heart and much courage tonight. He's overcome so much. Here's a squib kick now as it is fielded inside the 10 yard line. And Speedy Noyle on the return out to the 26. This is what happened a year ago against Auburn. Very scary scene, the season-ending neck injury. Well, you talked to Brett Bielema and some of the guys on Arkansas about this moment. And they were so concerned for Raleigh Williams, but he worked his way back. And he's been off to a good start this season for the 3-0 Razorbacks. Quarterback run, snuffed out. Dietrich Weiss. Right now, I don't, I, I don't think the Arkansas defense, and I know there's only a minute and some left before halftime, but I don't know that they respect the passing game right now of AM. I think in the second half, AM is going to have to dial up some, some pass plays down the field to threaten this Arkansas defense. Fifty one yards passing and forty seven of that came on one play. So not a typical AM passing game in the first half so far. Fifty seconds to play here in this first half, third and seven. Knight with time and with a strike complete to Josh Reynolds. And they have all three timeouts. So now that they've got this first down, I, I would expect to see Noel Mazzoni and Kevin Sumlin say, okay, that was a good throw. All right, he hasn't had the greatest first half. That was a good, confident throw. Let's see if we can get ourselves in scoring position again. Incomplete as he was trying to swing it to Ford. Momentum is such a big part of college football. AM will get the ball to start the third quarter. Remember, Arkansas won the toss and elected to receive. So if they could get some points here at the end of the first half and then get the ball to start the third quarter, it can shift momentum in the game. Here's Knight on the run now. Cuts to the outside and will scoot out. With 21 seconds remaining. And two timeouts, so the, the whole field is open for Trevor Knight here on this third down play. But they need another big completion. Another chunk play on this third down. Christian Kirk, only one catch for eight yards. This is him right here in the slot, working on Andre Tolliver. Here's Knight straight up the middle. Nobody was home. And there goes Trevor. He's done it again. Well, that was a perfect, perfect call on that third down play. When they put the back, Keith Ford in motion. Brooks Ellis went with him. 
and it was straight man with nobody in the middle of the field. And Trevor Knight took advantage of it. The Aggies have 222 yards. 137 of them have come on three plays. Trevor Knight, the 42-yard touchdown run, the 48-yard touchdown run, as we send it back to the studio and the BMW Halftime Report. Gentlemen, take it away. Well, Coach Sumlin, you guys had struggled in the red zone again tonight, but your quarterback took matters on his hands that last drive. What changed for him? Uh, nothing. I mean, he's, you know, we've got some quarterback run opportunities that we put in, and uh, he's taking advantage of them tonight. You guys wanted his feet to settle down in the pocket. So that first nice pass on that drive, they were settled. So how do you balance that? You don't want to take off and run every play, but you want to settle feet. No, he's got to, you know, he's missed a couple guys, got speedy running wide open, a little bit, a couple overthrows. He just needs to settle down, but he's running the ball like crazy. So somewhere in between, we need him to play quarterback and not just running back. Tonight. Okay, speaking of getting somebody activated, Christian Kirk, he's been way too quiet. How do you get him going in the second half? Well, you know, he, he you know, it's just been a beat off, just a little bit, one heartbeat, a little bit off, and, and, and uh, drop over here, started with, with a fumble. He just, the ball's been hitting him. We've, we've been targeting him, but uh, for whatever reason, they're doing a good job with him. Uh, we're, we're, we're not going to go away from him. He's, he's going to give us, we're going to give him an opportunity to make some plays tonight. Sounds great. Thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Two-yard touchdown run. Riley Williams. Redemption. And there goes Trevor. He's done it again. As we welcome you back to ESPN College Football Primetime. Presented by Geico. It's who they are. It's what they do. The last two times they've played, they've gone to overtime. Razorback 17, Aggies 17. Number 10 against number 17. We said it earlier, a game that many think this could reveal the team yeah. that becomes a threat to Alabama. We had a quarterback who left injured, comes back <laughs> and stars. Another quarterback who struggled to pass, but he's a running superstar. Fun first half, Todd. It's been very fun. The number's a little bit topsy-turvy, upside down, based on what these offenses have done coming in and I think both defenses have played well in the ball game so far tie ball game one turnover advantage for A&M in the ball game so far that could be critical here in the second half but so far very entertaining game it'll be interesting to see the adjustments that the two defenses make to stop the running of Trevor Knight and to stop the throwing of Austin Allen yeah Arkansas defense done a good job against the pass but yeah. who knew the running of Trevor Knight yeah. with the two big runs there the touchdown runs in the first half for a and m remember arkansas won the toss and they chose to start the game off with the ball so texas a and will be set to return here to start this second half thrilled you're with us here from at&t stadium joe todd and holly on your college football prime time here's keith ford from a couple yards in the end zone and good coverage, not even making it out to the 15. Moments ago, here's Holly with Coach. Well, Coach Bielema, you're running back from Dallas, Raleigh Williams with the, the goal line. He, you kept him out for a while. How did he redeem himself? Well, he's a, he's a good player. Obviously, he wanted to have that one back, but um, good players respond good, and that's hopefully what he's going to do. We talked all week about responding to adversity. We've had a little bit. We don't need to make this thing as close as we have. We've given up, uh, obviously, two easy scores. We'll take care. We want to make the quarterback go east to west. He can't throw the ball. We want to make, keep, make sure we keep playing the run game. Yeah, the quarterback run games hurt you a little bit. Yeah, it, so how do you make him go east well, to west? We, we want to make him throw the ball because we, we feel we got to corral him. We opened up to see in there in the middle, and he obviously sprung through. we got to do a good job with our two tackles inside to make that quarterback bounce. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Well, that time they were able to get to Trevor Knight as Tolliver had the tackle there. Gain of two. High snap, and here goes Keith Ford. And a good hole and an explosive acceleration from Ford. 18-yard run. Well, big split by the left tackle. Take a look at this split right here between the guard and the tackle. Stretching out that Arkansas defense. And Keith Ford slips right in there. Again, you got to respect the quarterback run. That opened it up for Ford. 
on the slant this time. There's Josh Reynolds, and right away, the Aggies are out to midfield. That's the throw he likes to make. And Josh Reynolds has been very quiet in the game. And that's a big catch for him right there. And a nice drive to start the second half here for the Aggies. Here's Williams. Good looking first down run. They'll move the chains again. What a nice start to the second half for Texas A&M. The running of Trevor Knight in the first half has really got the attention of the linebackers, Greenlaw and Brooks Ellis. And those inside runs are popping a little bit. By Hennicho. As he lowers his shoulder. And Texas A&M on the move, Holly. Well, Nacho is in there because Ricky Seals-Jones is still in the locker room. It is unlikely he will return to this game. A left ankle injury. He initially put weight on that, but it was too much. They had to carry him the rest of the way off the field. They have carted him off, and he's likely done for the night. Williams inside the 10. And wrestled down where it'll be first and goal at about the two. Well, this is the most balanced offensive possession that A&M has had all night. High snap. Fumbled the ball. Arkansas has it. They tried to go fast, and they went too fast. The ball was snapped high. Trevor Knight to just eat this one. He has to run this one and not try to make the late handoff after the high snap. He can't make a clean exchange and a costly turnover. And now the turnover game, even at two apiece. Look at Dre Greenwall. Big eyes with that ball laying on the ground and he jumps right on it. So now both teams with red zone turnovers. Not just red zone, but inside the five-yard line turnovers. I'm trying to go back to work with Williams. That's the 21st running play in the game for Arkansas. Nine plays have gone for either no yardage or a loss of yardage. The, the run defense of AM has been particularly stout tonight. We talk about Miles Garrett and Deshaun Hall and their ability to rush the passer and their athleticism, but the guys on the inside and the linebackers behind them have done a nice job in this run defense. Play action, Allen from his end zone. And coming back to it, but unable to corral it was Keon Hatcher, so it'll be third and eight. Pretty good protection, just an underthrown ball that time. Hatcher's had a good night for them. He's drawn a lot of single coverage, and he, he was open for what would have been a first down. Third and eight in a spot like this, and you know who's on the field for the Aggies. Big number 15. They've had a pretty diverse plan on third down of how they've tried to handle him. They've given him a lot of different looks. Very few times has it been a single blocker on him. Allen on third and eight. Has time, and going up and getting it is Drew Morgan. Boy, was that clutch. Again, the protection. Jeremy Sprinkle, the tight end, is going to nudge Miles Garrett on the way out. He's going to bump him and then go in the route, and then Dan Skipper is going to be in a position to block him. Little nudge, take away that first step, keep the pocket clean, and Austin Allen delivers. 17-yard reception to Morgan. Last year, he had his breakout game here at AT&T against a and Had 155 yards on a touchdown. As Miles Garrett takes a knee in a fresh set of downs for the Razorbacks. And Williams wrapped up. Arkansas creeping closer to 100 yards rushing now. 
in the ball game, coming in averaging 171 yards a game. That's the M.O. for Arkansas. Run and run play action and bootleg off of your running game. It's been a little bit reversed. The passing game has kind of set up the run tonight for Arkansas. Allen Morgan as he's able to get inside the 40 yard line and another Razorback first down and Miles Garrett. Yeah. Well, they ran a cut block with Dan Skipper. It's not an illegal block. They lined a tight end up first to make him come from a longer distance away. And then Dan Skipper, when you throw quick, a cut block is what you use a lot. But it was a low cut and he got him right on that ankle. Watch he's number 70 come out and cut the legs out. And Garrett is writhing in pain as the results of this. So we will check on one of the very best players in all of college footballs. He's being tended to when we return. Texas A&M superstar defensive end Miles Garrett was able to gingerly run off the field in his own power. He's come to the sideline where an athletic trainer is heavily taping that left ankle. He's going to test it out right now. I know that Aggie Nation is probably breathing a huge sigh of relief, but you can see him running down the sideline, moving pretty well right now. I will tell you those cut blocks had been going on earlier in the game. Miles was tired before that play. I could see his tummy heaving as he was trying to catch his breath. He just couldn't get his ankles out of the way quick enough, but it does look like he may be able to return. Well, it's great to see him running over on the sideline as well, Holly, the All-America, an elite NFL. Yeah. Allen. Incomplete trying to find Hatcher down at the goal line covered by Willis well, that time priest Willis all over it This time he knew where the football was he's in perfect stride for stride He's reading the eyes and then he turns right as Hatcher makes a play to the ball John Chavis's defense you mentioned Brandon Allen he said he looks at Austin thinks they're twins you're not gonna bother him at all says he's just as prepared as his brother was second and ten 13th play Bobby Allen Austin's dad looks on he's been a part of his staff for years and around here with Cornelius Cornelius breaks that first would-be tackle that was Deshaun Hall chasing that play down from the backside He's had a pretty quiet night. They've done a good job of keeping him away from the quarterback. But he's so fast and he chased that play down from the backside and stopped it short of the first down. Third and three. Allen on a design quarterback sweep and he gets it. Great call. Great call because AM going with some inside pressure. Claude George is going to blitz from the middle. He's going to blitz. They're thinking the pressure's coming in here, and it's a designed run with two blockers in front to get the first down. Skipper and the back in front of Austin Allen. We saw that same kind of run to win the game at TCU in double overtime. Dan Enos, the play caller, had some great calls in that thriller. And he's been piecing together a masterful drive here with the help of a few defensive penalties and some clutch third down conversions. Allen now to pass on first down as he leaves it for Sprinkle and Sprinkle maintains his footing and we'll see where they mark him down. This is really a nice job by Sprinkle because he really sold run first. He didn't release into this route quickly. He really shows block first and then releases late as the outlet receiver and gets the ball inside the five yard line. And it is a first and goal. What a drive by Arkansas. Eating up clock and wearing down defenders. Arkansas with a 15 minute difference in time of possession in the ball game. Williams. And just beyond the line of scrimmage. 
Time of possession doesn't mean a lot to certain offenses in college football. Texas A&M being one of them. But to Arkansas, it means a lot. Brett Bielema, his teams are 68 and 24, which is a 74% clip of winning when they win the time of possession. And right now, they've more than doubled Texas A&M's time. 17th play of a drive. Let's knock it on eight minutes. How about a little push from your friends? Did he get in? They're going to mark Allen short there. Austin Cantrell, number 44, lined up as the fullback, and all he did was just run right in to the back of Austin Allen and try to push him over the goal line. Third and goal inches away from taking the lead. They do it again. And once again, the Aggies front stonewall somebody. Are they giving them that second effort? No. Well, that's good goal line defense. Really crowding the line of scrimmage. The interior guys are going low. And the linebackers and safeties, George and Watts, come over the top. Watch the linemen go low and the safety and linebacker come high and stop Austin Allen. Saggy's defense, when it gets down to the nitty gritty, has been superb tonight. As Summy roots him on, and we got a fourth and goal here. I wonder do they have somebody that can fly over the top? Cody Walker is the back in the backfield, the bigger of the Arkansas running backs. Fourth and goal. Instead, they go with Hatcher, and he's gobbled up for a loss. Stonewalled by the Aggies. Armani Watts comes up big. Well, we've seen Armani Watts make the play the top on the one yard line and this time playing with leverage watch him right here not allowing the ball to get outside he reads it he comes up and he keeps the ball to his inside and makes a sure tackle another huge goal line stop by the AM defense well miles garrett who was injured about five minutes ago who had tried to go out there and play had a very difficult time limping off the field after that last stop he's been over on the sideline they've taken all the tape all the braces the shoe off of that left ankle they're starting from scratch trying to retape him and get him back out there back out there to join a defense that just came up with a fourth and goal stop that was sensational to see a 19 play 94 yard drive that has stopped on fourth and goal yeah, and it was it was just gut check time for the AM defense. They had to be fatigued. They were on the field a long time. Arkansas had their big bodies on and just were convinced they could impose their will on the AM defense inside the two-yard line, and they were denied. Trevor Knight from his end zone gonna take a shot downfield. And Josh Reynolds, could it be? Here we go, folks. Wacky and Arlington back and forth. They go. 92-yard touchdown reception, Josh Reynolds. That was a beautiful throw by Trevor Knight. They went max protection. They kept the tight end and the running back in. Seven blockers. And his big down the field go-to guy, Josh Reynolds, came up with a huge catch. Your defense gets the stop. So offensively, you come out and say, let's be aggressive right away. Beautiful throw and catch. A missed tackle by DJ Dean. And 
just like that, A&M on top. Fourth and goal stop, 92-yard touchdown the other way, 24-17 Texas A&M. Backed up deep, an aggressive call, but they went max protection, so they're going to keep this guy in and the tight end. Single coverage here and a beautiful throw over the outside shoulder to the speedy Josh Reynolds. He came originally to Arkansas, recruited by the track coach. He's got great speed. He averaged over 18 yards per catch last year, and he makes the biggest catch of the night for the Aggie offense so far. And Pat Henry is the Texas A&M track and field coach, and he told Kevin Sumlin, hey, you got to go see this hurdler up at Tyler Junior College, as the story goes. Summy was a good listener, and Josh Reynolds is a big game changer down here at AT&T Stadium, 24-17. Pitch to Whaley. And here goes Whaley. A good gainer out to the 45 and a first down for the Razorbacks. Nice vision by Whaley. The blocks were going to take him outside. Watch Sprinkle and Brian Wallace. They're trying to escort him out to the perimeter, and he saw a crease with his vision and cut back and turned it into a nice run for the first down. Took that hit and then fell forward past midfield. Holly. Well, guys, you briefly mentioned it, but just an update on Texas A&M's leading tackler, Justin Evans, their safety. He has been out for the last two long drives from Arkansas. He's been on the sideline being seen to for a right shoulder injury. Doesn't look like he will be able to return to this game, and that's a huge problem. He's their leading tackler. The end of the third quarter that had a nearly 10-minute drive for Arkansas come up empty, only to see Trevor Knight go 92 yards to Josh Reynolds, and we got the great fourth quarter still to come. Joe Tessitore, Todd Blackledge, Holly Rowe with you here as we start the fourth quarter at AT&T Stadium. Sixth time over the last eight years that this matchup has taken place here. And each and every time, seemingly a thriller, as is the case again tonight. Aggies by seven. Cut down that time by Donovan Wilson was Whaley. Well, again, these active guys in the back end, they're playing without one of the best in Justin Evans, as Holly reported. But Donovan is an outstanding player in his own right. Donovan Wilson, John Chavis, who coached Tyron Matthew at LSU compares him to that, and here comes Justin Evans back into the ball game. Able to play their nickel, they take Richard Moore out, who is an outside linebacker, and good to see Evans back on the field. Third and three. Allen to pass. Has time, and incomplete. He had his man. But that time, Reed couldn't hold on. Nick Harvey, who's had some problems tonight. I'll tell you what, to play cornerback at a major college level, you got to have short-term memory loss. you got to let those mistakes and those penalties go. And that time, he came up with a beautiful stop on third down. So on comes Toby Baker. And back goes Christian Kirk. See if Baker can pin them here. Air catch at about the 14. Now they feel they've got a leader. Trevor Knight has done it on the ground tonight for the Aggies. Travion Williams doing it well running the ball here. Travion Williams, a true freshman out of Houston, playing in his home state. Off to a good start this season for a young back. 
There he goes again. A little extra something there. Try to get it to four. He had a run last week against Auburn where he just was weaving through the entire defense. It was magnificent. It was the SEC freshman of the week. 215 yards rushing now for Texas A&M. Only 124 for Arkansas. Knight gets it to Williams, and Williams turns on the speed. Nice touch that time by Trevor Knight. Give him the ball. Let him catch it with his eyes upfield. And he'll do the rest. A&M now with a, a touchdown lead. No reason to go super fast. The clock is on their side at this point. Quick pass and complete out to midfield to Kirk. Well, Trevor Knight at one point was 4 for 11 throwing the football in this game. He is now 10 of 18 for 208 yards and the 92-yard touchdown. 11 for 19, I should say, 217 yards. Second and two. And that was thrown a bit behind Speedy Noel. You see, Knight has improved in the second half. He had hit his last six prior to that. See what they come up with on third and two. As Williams will surge ahead for the Aggies first down. First down, Aggies. Williams darting through and into the end zone. Travion Williams, 33-yard touchdown. That was excellent execution by the offensive line of Texas A&M. The two tackles with two key blocks on that touchdown. And I just think back to that moment in the third quarter when Arkansas was down there at the one yard line and the Aggies said no. And then the offense since then Plenty of yeses. Williams, money, score it. 21 unanswered by AM. Glad you're watching College Football Primetime presented by Geico as we continue with Dr. Pepper's championship drive game of the week. Now, beautiful execution by Texas A&M on, on that run. Watch the two tackles right here. They are both going to get great blocks. Illuminor is going to get the two, the two linebackers are the guys you have to get. Genesee's going to come and get the other linebacker. Greenlaw and Brooks Ellis are the two guys you have to block on the inside. And they were both picked up beautifully. I think Williams gives this offense a different dimension, Todd. Uh, that kind of speed. Freshman in the backfield now. Here comes Hall. Ball is out. And a fight for it. It was Day Day Hall crashing in on Austin Allen, and it's the Aggies' ball at the 15 yard line. Well, this is bad execution. Jeremy Sprinkle, the tight end, is lined up on that side, and he's going to try to take a little bit of steam out of Deshaun Hall to help Brian Wall. He doesn't get enough of him. And Deshaun Hall makes him pay. Again, you're thinking pass all the way. That plays right into the hands of these two defensive ends. 
And it was a sack fumble. A sack fumble turned this game last year by Miles Garrett. And that one there might do in the Arkansas Razorbacks, even though there's 11 minutes left in the football game. Dotson with the fumble recovery. Day Day Hall with the sack fumble. Todd, you called it, and they delivered. Trevor Knight, look at the time. And that was tipped, it looked like, on its way to the end zone. And you talk so much about Miles Garrett, but Day Day Hall on the other side, he is something. Deshaun Hall came to a uh, and A&M as a basketball body, 208 pounds. And now he's about 270. James White as he's wrestled down inside the 10 yard line. I'm impressed with the A&M running game. You mentioned Travion Williams, the, the spark he gives them, the running of Trevor Knight with the two long touchdowns and the threat of him running always. And then there's this, Christian Kirk. Beautiful job by James White, the running back, picking up the blitz, giving Trevor Knight just enough time to make that throw to Christian Kirk for the touchdown. All set up by that guy, Deshaun Hall, and his strip of the quarterback. Everywhere you look, you see talent and speed, dynamic athletes all over the field for Anna. And Todd, it started with Hall. Austin Allen, who's had a very solid game, didn't see him coming. Short field, and AM wasted no time in making this a 21-point lead. 17 points off three Arkansas turnovers now. Trevor Knight's got a couple of touchdown passes now. Of course, he's got the two touchdown runs. This is Deion Stewart. And Stewart is met down at about the 20, and a flag comes in from easily 30 yards away. <laughs> Third and three, and as complete to Cornelius. And Cornelius long striding out to midfield. Now, Chavis was a key hire for the success they're having now in order to get these kind of results. Austin Allen took another big shot from Richard Moore after that throw. He laid it on the money, but boy, he paid the price for it. A delayed blitz again by Richard Moore. Well, Todd, you consider over. what happened earlier tonight. Paul George came in, had that big hit, the yeah. bruised chest muscle, and then Deshaun Hall moments ago. Austin Allen is going to feel this one tomorrow. You, you just can't pass every down, even though you're down three scores. You, you got to try to keep this defense honest, even though you need to score and score quickly. They're not built to just drop back and throw every down. Allen downfield, and Drew Morgan tried to stay with it that time. He was covered by Harvey. Short-term memory loss, essential for a corner. Nick Harvey had some things go against him early in the game. Here in the second half of the game, he's made a couple nice plays. There have been many big moments from this Aggies defense tonight. Third and four now. A little bit of pressure and it falls incomplete as they were getting in on Austin Allen. Well, they brought the house. They end up playing man with a free safety behind it. Collapse the pocket. 
And Austin Allen just not able to make an accurate throw on this third down play. You see his Miles head snap back when Miles Garrett came crashing down on him. So it's a fourth down for Arkansas. Pressure in the A gap. They pick it up, but off the edge. Hall gets to him. Good job holding on to it. Jared Cornelius. Seven yard reception to keep the drive alive. Yeah, Justin Evans was there to make the tackle, tried to separate Cornelius from the ball. Austin Allen under pressure again. Gets hit by Deshaun Hall, but stays in there, showing his toughness and his grit. First down throw. And that is complete that time as Cody Hollister has an 18 yard reception. Remember, it was Hollister who opened up the game with the fumble recovery. Allen, as he goes short underneath. And tackled right away that time was Jackson. This is the sixth red zone possession for Arkansas. They've had a turnover and a turnover on downs. Of course, that was the big moment in the third quarter. Second and goal. There's some pressure in the A gap. And scoring it is Cornelius. Much needed for the hopeful Hogs here. AM looked like they were expecting inside routes. And when Cornelius broke to the sideline, there was nobody there to pick him up. Good execution, good call. And a much needed quick score for Arkansas. Jared Cornelius, who likes to create his own music, plays the drums at a local church, mixes a bit, records, and that was a good tune right there with a the touchdown catch. How about a little DJ J Red? Listen up, this is his stuff as we take you to break. Thirty-eight twenty-four. Arkansas just scored, and now Texas A&M's got the hands team up and Christian Kirk resting at the twenty. They do the weave to go with the onside, and it is handled by Josh Reynolds easily. The Aggies will continue to run it here with Williams. He is over 100 yards again. And it's back to back weeks for the freshman running back. Noel Mazzoni, the new offensive coordinator, was at UCLA the last three years. Spent a lot of years in different spots in the SEC. Brings a little bit more run game and a little bit more quarterback run to this offense. Of course, Trevor Knight fits that really well. Offensive line coach Jim Turner is back at A&M. He was there with Mike Sherman, helped recruit a lot of those first-round draft pick offensive linemen. And here goes Williams again, keeping his balance inside the 30. He's got a little wiggle, a little power, and a whole lot of speed. 23-yard run. And, and what's happening now is what we're used to seeing Arkansas do to a defense, wear them down with the running game. This Arkansas defense looks fatigued. That's why you see missed tackles and, and open gaps. And Travion Williams looks fresh running it. Hundred and thirty one yards. He was a huge recruit that they felt they needed to land. Early enrolled and has over delivered. Closing in on three hundred yards rushing for the game. Williams again, all too easy. Travion Williams. 22 yard touchdown run. It's, it's a tired defense. 
That's all it is. It's a, it's a very tired defense that's out of position. And a fresh back who just has looked better and better each time he carries it. The running game of AM, the difference tonight. 310 yards rushing now in the ball game. Williams with 153, Knight with 95. It was Trevor Knight, the quarterback, in the first half. Had the 42-yard touchdown run, the 48-yard touchdown run. But down the stretch, it has been Williams. 153 yards and a couple of scores. Well, Maria Laura and the guys of SEC Nation started their year with a visit to Texas A&M. Maybe they handed out some good luck, saw something coming, because the Aggies are rolling through. 45 to 24 now, as Williams has 135 rushing yards in this half alone. As Stewart will take a knee. October 22nd, the Aggies are at Alabama. Austin Allen, what an effort by Cornelius. Jared Cornelius has had some moments here tonight. Tell you what, I admire the courage of Austin Allen, too. Oh, he's a gritty guy. Again, this is this his fourth career start. And, uh, you know, he knows he's getting hit. He's hanging in there as long as he possibly can. He's not flinching. And he's delivering some accurate throws down the field. And there's another one to the sideline to yeah. Drew Morgan. I mean, that's an NFL type throw right there. He's on the right hash. He's throwing that in between a corner and safety on the left sideline. I mean, this is not your everyday throw. Right hash on a rope in between the corner and safety to the left sideline. I mean, you're not going to just find every quarterback, any quarterback that's going to make that throw, especially after he's been knocked around in a night like Austin Allen has. And they were tracking him down again as he was able to get it to wow. Drew Morgan. That was Henderson coming after him that time. It'll be a fun month of October for AM. You bring up the Tennessee game and then the Alabama game. We're going to find out a lot about the Aggies, but so far they look the part, don't they? Especially that guy, Miles Garrett. Some contact there. You know, near the goal line, but it's we, overthrown for Cornelius. We talked a lot all night, and, and rightfully so, about Miles Garrett and Deshaun Hall, but they rotated a lot of guys on the inside at the tackle position that played well. Linebacker Sean Washington, Otero Alaka played well, Richard Moore, a lot of blitzing from his linebacker position. And then those guys on the back end, Armani Watts, Donovan Wilson, and Justin Evans, three very, very active safety type, nickelback type guys that make a lot of tackles for this defense. There's Evans looking on on the big screen here at AT&T. Third and eight, Allen sprinting right, throwing on the run and beyond Morgan. I still think this Arkansas team is a good football team, too. I mean, they've game got away from them here late in the third quarter, but I think this is a team that's uh, that's talented. I think they've got uh, they've got playmakers and they got a quarterback that I tell you you can build around. I mean, <laughs> the, the toughness and the competitiveness that he's shown tonight well, that bodes well for them as this season goes on if he stays healthy. Fourth and eight here. Pressure again. And the ball falls harmlessly to the ground. It was Armani Watts. And Austin Allen is slow to get up. Now they just, they overloaded on that right side. There was only three blockers and they brought four. Armani Watts was the fourth guy and he was unblocked. 
and he got right to the quarterback and forced the ball to go up in the air. Remember, it was Watts who had the big stop on fourth and goal in the third quarter. You look at this score now, but to think where this game was at that moment yep. when Arkansas had a 19 play 94 yard drive in a tie game and then Watts tackles Keon Hatcher and then they flip the script Trevor Knight 92 yard touchdown to Josh Reynolds and they were off and running on third and nine Trevor Knight he's going to add to his big total in a big big way running the ball tonight and what a way to close it out as he goes 62 yards well it's just basic zone read blocking and he's got a blocker out in front the tight end and again just good read good decision to pull the football and then the speed and the athleticism of trevor knight shows itself 157 yards rushing now on only 10 carries. And for AM as a team, 372 yards rushing. So this SEC much anticipated showdown will go to the Aggies. We got the ACC showdown next Saturday night on ABC. Lamar Jackson. Deshaun Watson, number three at number five. That's going to be a great one next Saturday night on ABC. Arkansas had one five straight, but Texas A&M is 4-0 for the third straight year. 157 yards rushing and a couple touchdown runs for Trevor Knight. Williams had 153, an outstanding fourth quarter for Travion Williams. That goal line stand and then the 92-yard touchdown pass to Josh Reynolds and all of a sudden this game went in a different direction. Sports Center at night with Scott Van Pelt is coming your way, but let's go to Holly. Well, Trevor, in this second half, you really came alive with your arm talent, making some key throws downfield. What was different for you? Yeah, you know, uh, in the first half, we didn't we didn't throw the ball that well. Uh, missed on a few things, and we just we didn't get into a rhythm. Really made an emphasis on it at halftime that we had to get a, that first first down, get into our tempo stuff, get a rhythm going. And then our guy just made a bunch of big plays for us. For you, running the football was also a weapon tonight. What was the statement on that last long run with a minute left? Really wish I would have put that one in the end zone. Uh, but, you know, that's just credit to those guys up front. They're making big holes the whole, the whole night. Um, you know, you saw Trey on that second to last drive, put it in the end zone with ease. And so I'm really proud of those guys. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you, guys. Are the Aggies the X factor in the SEC now? Is this the team that is the threat to Alabama? Boy, did they look good down the stretch. 45 to 24. For Todd and Holly, I'm Joe Tessator saying have a great night, including this guy, Scotty Van Pelton, Sports Center at night, right now.